there is no God. Wachenroder, 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 Wach. Ugh. I gotta stop talking about these like unpronounceable game titles. Wachenroder is a turn-based strategy role-playing Ronge Murata Yoshitoshi Abe joint developed by TNS Company Limited for the Sega Saturn in 1998. Let me just nerd out here for a bit, as if making YouTube videos about obscure old games isn't nerdy enough, and bask in late 90s, early 2000s anime -dom. Ronge Murata is the artist and character designer behind series like Last Exile and Blue Submarine No. 6. While Yoshitoshi Abe is one of the main creative forces behind projects such as Serial Experiments Lane, Haibane Renmei, and Niea Under 7. Yasuyuki Ueda was also involved in the development of this game, and while he's a pretty good artist in his own right, he's mostly known for his role as producer on many of the series mentioned above. Wakenroder is like a niche, underground 30-something anime fans dream team collaboration. Think about how hyped people were when Hironobu Sakaguchi, Yuji Hori, and Akira Toriyama came together to produce Chrono Trigger, and maybe you'll get an inkling of the wonder that me and probably about five other people feel at hearing Murata Abe and Ueda collaborated on a game. And hopefully, for the love of God, that's the last time I have to pronounce all these names from other languages. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> But yeah, like, not to deflate things so early on in the runtime of this video, but Wackenroder ain't as good as Chrono Trigger. But anyway, Wackenroder is a Japanese-only release, and there was an effort to translate it a few years ago by a fan translator who goes by the name of Knight of Dragon. Unfortunately, he never got a fully working fan translation patch going, and it seems like the project has been abandoned for the time being. You can still hunt down the partially completed translation if you put in some effort, but just know that it crashes after the second fight, so you'll only be able to play the first hour of the game in English. A nice little demo, though. There will be a bit of footage from this abandoned translation along with the original Japanese game. This isn't a breakdown of the entire game or anything, though. I guess the point of this video is just to show off this neat little hidden gem, and maybe, hopefully, somebody with the right know-how will be able to pick up where Knight of Dragon left off. We can always dream. In a departure from many Japanese tactical role-playing games on the market, and even just role-playing games in general, Wackenroder is set in a steampunk-inspired sci-fi world where the upper class have built several heavy water treatment facilities, whose refining process creates soot and pollution that feeds directly into the poorer regions of the island of Edward, where the game takes place. We take control of Lucian Taylor, a young man who's from a poor family in the slum district of Violent City. And if that name alone isn't enough to paint a picture of the town, then yeah. He lives with his twin sister and his father. Their mother died when the two siblings were young from an illness known as heavy water syndrome caused by the pollution from the heavy water treatment facilities. Lucian's sister was born with the disease, which is also referred to as frightening light syndrome, since sunlight can also burn the flesh of those afflicted. Lucian's sister even mentions at one point that even the light from the full moon is enough to burn her skin. This is all pretty heavy, and it really plays up some of that late 90s anime melancholia that was prevalent in a lot of anime and video games at the time. Since this is a JRPG, you can bet that even if we find out that there actually is a god, we're definitely going to kill it. Lucian hears a rumor about a fighting competition where wealthy patrons bet on slave fighters. The fights are, uh, deadly, but profitable. And later, Lucian seeks out a recruiter of these tournaments and is given a weapon called a sledge, basically a mechanized steam-powered sword. Lucian proves he can wield the sword and mercilessly cuts down another fighter recruit in the streets. He then leaves for a week, traveling around as a tournament fighter, earning enough to buy medicine for his ailing sister, but he returns too late. We then skip ahead about four years to the imperial city of King Crimson, reference to the seminal prog rock act of the same name, and in a district of that city called Art of Noise, reference to a late 80s synth pop band. And these aren't the last musical references we'll see. More on that later. We're also introduced to a new character, Carolyn Mew, as she is being pursued by an assassin squad. Meanwhile, inside a bar, we see Lucian getting into an argument with some drunks. Lucian, who is also drunk, 
decides to take it outside at the behest of the bar owners. But at the same time, Carolyn and the assassin squad show up at the entrance of the bar. The junks get cut down while Lucian is still stumbling his way outside. In a drunken stupor, Lucian sees Carolyn as his dead sister and decides to protect her from the assassin squad. Meanwhile, another young woman named Small, clearly a roguish type, watches from a nearby rooftop, hoping to steal Lucian's belongings after he gets himself killed and sell Carolyn, since she's clearly an upper class type and will probably fetch a good price. Not sure how much YouTube's algorithm likes it when you mention a uh, forced indentured servitude in a video, but yeah, this is actually a big problem in the world of Vak and Rotor, and something that will pop up throughout the story. All of this is just the setup and finally leads to the first battle. Vak and Rotor is from a time when games really took their time with dialogue and cutscenes. My recording time is already at almost half an hour, and I'm just now getting into the unit setup screen. I realize it can be a bit trying to sit through all of this when you first pick up the game, but honestly the presentation and the characters are intriguing enough that I really got into it and didn't even notice that that much time had passed since I turned the game on. It's a mark of a good story when you just get sucked into it and forget that you're actually supposed to be, you know, playing something. Anyway, so we finally get our first taste of battle, which works like most strategy RPGs. The battlefield is small and broken into a grid. You have an isometric view and can move a certain number of spaces depending on your action points. Thanks to the AP system, you can potentially take several actions with a single character during your turn. This is neat, but it also takes the strategy out of the strategy RPG a bit. To me, the most engaging and nail-biting part about a good strategy RPG is setting up your characters and making a move, then hoping that you've done enough damage to off an enemy or have high enough health or defense to tank their counterattack, and just letting things play out. Here, if you keep an eye on your AP, you can almost always move yourself out of harm's way after attacking. You also have a lot of ways to dole out high damage. Vagan Rotor has a mechanic where you can rev up your character's weapons by pressing down on the d-pad after selecting attack. The higher the revs, the stronger the attack will be, but the max is dependent on a heat bar that builds up above each character's status box. And if it gets too high, your weapon will overheat, meaning that you can still attack, but you can't rev, and will need to rest to bring the heat gauge back down. There are also tech attacks, which are special moves that transition into a 3D view showing the attack going off. Gotta love when the Saturn tries to show off its 3D capabilities. So, there are some cool mechanics at work, but most of them just make you feel really OP. As long as you don't just throw yourself into a group of enemies, you'll mostly be dealing out huge damage with little consequence. I've seen a lot of people who've played Vakken Rotor complain that the overall difficulty is pretty low, especially with the ability to enhance your attack power by revving weapons and using your tech attacks liberally. I don't really see that as a problem though, especially if you're just interested in checking out the story, which along with the grim world and gritty art style are the main draws of this game. Though I can see how a lot of strategy fans might be put off by the ease of the proceedings here. As far as the first few fights in the game go, things are pretty straightforward, though the second fight does have you flipping switches to extend bridges while you run away from a group of powerful enemies, which is a nice change of pace. I actually really like that battle. Man, and I haven't even mentioned the other huge draw of this game yet, which plays into all the classic rock references a bit too, and that's the soundtrack. Get this, Ian McDonald, who was a founding member of the band's King Crimson, where Imperial City and Wackenroder gets its name, and Foreigner composed tracks for this game. The rest of the music was composed by Satoshi Miyashita and Takayuki Negishi, the latter of which did a bunch of anime OST work throughout the 90s and 2000s, and he still does stuff even today. As far as other game work, he contributed tracks to all three Bloody Roar games, so there's that. Even though the music is kind of all over the place in terms of tone, it fits with the more somber beats of the story and accompanies the chaotic streets that you fight through in the beginning of the game. Vakken Rotor is a strange little hidden gem, and it would be amazing if someone came along and took up the translation work on this one. With so many obscure games being translated nowadays, there's no reason why this one should sit in the dust. Or maybe the soot, considering the story and everything. But anyway, yeah, the anime pedigree and the goddamn musical pedigree should be enough to lift this one out of obscurity. Although, I say this as a 30-something who grew up with a lot of the stuff these guys did as a background to my adolescence, so maybe I'm just out of touch, but I don't care. Vakken Rotor is a light, breezy strategy RPG with a heavy and dark storyline to pull it along. So, Vakken Rotor, check it out. Dungeon Chill, out. <laughs>